Gel overlay is not as complicated as nail extensions. It does not allow us to change the length or the shape of the nails. But depending on how you apply the product, we may totally change the look of the nails. We may make them look wider and more bulky, and we can do the opposite. In this video, I'm going to share some tips on how to do gel overlay and make it last, and also how to make nails look slimmer coming up. Hello guys, this is Anastasia. Today my client is Barbara. She works at Nails Pro Academy, which is my project online school for nail enthusiasts and technicians. She is doing graphic design, organizing lessons in online classes and much more. She is usually behind the scenes, but today she is my client and we are going to transform her nails. She has gel polish overlay and we are going to transform it do manicure and hard gel overlay. The condition of the overlay and her nails is rather good for three and a half weeks. I would just probably apply gel in a different way so it will not look as thick. Let's get started. First, we need to file off the old product. I will be using a two-way carbide bit by Chiara Sky. Two ways means it may work both ways, whether you're right or left-handed. Once I take off the color, I'm going to see what's underneath. If we do not see product lifting, then it's okay to leave a thin layer of the old product, but I recommend to file off the product on the free edge completely, because usually in this area we have slight discoloration, some lifting, especially along the sidewalls, so it is better to keep it clean. I can't see much product lifting, which is a good thing, but like I said, I'm going to remove the product from the free edge. And also, since the original application was a bit thick, I'm going to file off clear product as well, so the nail will be almost clean and we will get a chance to build a different structure, so the nails will look thinner. Then we proceed to manicure and cuticle care. Sometimes it's not possible to push back the cuticles with a pusher. It hurts, it's so painful and looks like it's connected to the skin so tightly that it is quite impossible to separate it without pain. In this case, I usually use a stone bead, 18,000 rotations per minute, forward mode, and this is what I do. I technically file off this part of the skin from the nail plate then I can take an orange wood stick and now I can securely slightly push back the cuticles and it is not causing any more pain. Some clients have all cuticles like this, but Barbara, she has only two nails with the cuticles that look like it. So let me show you it once again. This is the cuticle that is not possible to push back and this is what I do. At a low speed, I slightly file the dead skin the dry tissue on top of the nail plate, it doesn't hurt at all. If it does, you need to stop and change the direction or the speed. This bit is rather soft, by the way, and once again, I'm able to push back the cuticles, which means I can continue working as usual. Then we need to see the shape and the length of the nails. Looks like it is quite different. So we need to make sure they are identical, especially the ring and the index finger. Some clients do not wish to change the length or the shape of their nails. And they say, please keep my natural length. But even if they ask for it, you still need to slightly freshen up the free edge because once we file it, like once we touch it with a file, we remove all the oil residues 
from the edge of the free edge, if that does make sense. So make sure you do it as well. Even though hard gel or soft gel overlay is not as complicated as gel extensions, nail prep is still one of the most important steps and if you do it properly you will not experience any problems with product lifting. So you need to do it thoroughly. I push back the cuticles with orange wood stick and usually do it with the side of it so it is not going to cut or damage the cuticle. It's very important to keep it as a whole piece. And then I proceed to dry manicure. This is the flame bit with red abrasive mark. The speed is 17,000 rotations per minute. I clean the area of the nail plate as well as the sidewalls. The most important part of this step is to clean the cuticle that is spreading across the nail plate because if we will not do it properly and then we apply the product on top where some of the cuticle still remains we will have a product lifting in this area 100%. I continue working on the opposite side. The speed is the same, but now the rotation is reverse. And then I also push up the cuticles with the flame bit, so it is going to be easier to trim it. There are a few different ways to do that. We can use an electric nail file, we can use manicure scissors, or we can use nippers. And it totally depends on you. I get this question a lot. Which tool is better? Which will help me to achieve a better result? The thing is, there is no such tool as the best in the world. It depends on the technique you're working with. I've been using nippers for a long time, then I switched to electric nail file, and now I use mostly two different tools. Manicure scissors, as I do now, and electric nail file. I pick manicure scissors when I see that the skin is a little bit oily or a client has hyperhidrosis, which is excessive sweat, and also when I see that there is a lot to work on. Also some clients who bite their nails or have many hangnails or cuts around the cuticles, in this case I am also going to use manicure scissors. But if the skin is very dry, if there is not a lot to clean, then for me it is easier to use an electric nail file. I also know many nail technicians who use nippers all the time and they achieve a great clean results. So it's all up to you. I recommend you to try different techniques and figure out which one works the best for you. But whatever you use, manicure scissors or nippers, please make sure you have them sharpened on time because when they are dull it will not be possible to achieve a good result. Then we need to take off the surface shine and I will be using 180 grit buffer. You can also use a regular file, it, it feels better for you. One of the most common issues when product is lifting on the free edge is when we use soft buffers for prep, such as 400, 5 or even 600 grit. In this case you are polishing the free edge to a high shine and this is not what we need. You need to use at least 180 grit buffer to prep the nail. After this part we need to clean the dust. At this point I usually ask my clients to wash their hands and yes, this is absolutely safe. They can even use soap. I like how these nails look like when they're all clean and prepped for the application. We are going to use hard gel today for the overlay. I will use dehydrator on the nail plate to apply it and wait until it's dry. And then I'm going to use a non-acid primer only on the free edge area. 
when you are doing overlay, this is enough. But if you have a client and you know that they always experience problems with product lifting, you may also apply non-acid primer on the entire nail plate. Then I apply a thin coat of the base coat, cure it in LED for one minute, and then we are going to do an overlay itself. You may use base coat from hard gel systems, but I prefer using base coat for gel polishes and I use the one by Cuba. We decided to do a nude overlay, so first I apply a thin coat of gel and I am not going to cure it, I just make sure that it covers the entire surface of the nail, as you can see it's taking a while, and then I'm going to do the printing technique. Everyone loves it when I'm showing this on TikTok or Instagram, because I have to agree, it's just satisfying to watch. So we just take a small drop of gel and this is very important to hold the client's hands the way I do. So the free edge of the nail is facing towards the table, that's why the gravity is actually helping us with the product application. We need to apply a little bit more of the product in the center to build the apex and less product near the sidewalls and near the free edge and then we cure for one minute. When you are working with any light cured products such as gels, do not waste time on doing nails one by one. While one hand is curing in the lamp, you need to work with the opposite hand, so that each nail will be curing while you are doing another one. And we repeat the process all over again. Apply the gel, make sure it is not touching the skin, especially along the sides, because sometimes you may not notice this, and if the first layer is touching the skin, you will start the application and the product is going to get onto the sidewall. I'm showing you a no filing technique, which means we will apply the product, then we will apply color and that's it. We are not going to file it, because why would we need to do that if we can simply avoid it? Cure for another minute and the overlay is finished. Now we need to apply the color, but if something like this happens, and for some reason it happens to me and my clients all the time, then we need to take off the sticky layer. This is some fuzz from Barbara's sweater, and it's totally fine if it happens, like do not worry. I noticed that some nail technicians are so worried for removing the sticky layer, but sticky layer is not a glue. The product is going to adhere to each other, so don't worry about that, just clean it with an alcohol and then we will apply the color. We really liked this nude gel, so we decided not to change it much, and I'm using the semi-transparent milky gel polish with a golden foil. I noticed that you guys enjoy this format of the video when I respond to the questions as I show some new tutorial. So if you have any questions related to an overlay, gel overlay, gel polish overlay, just feel free to ask under this video and I'm going to include some of the questions in my next videos. I think one coat will be enough here, we cure it for 60 seconds and then we seal it with a no wipe top coat. As you can see, I did not apply too much product, but I still added more in the center. So now we have strong nails with an apex, but they still not look too thick or bulky. Let me know what do you think. And thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here on my channel, consider subscribing as I post new tutorials just like this one every week. See you in my next video. Goodbye!